just this week, Governor, the, the Attorney General, Andrea Campbell, told five investigates that the $1 million state cap on compensation for the wrongfully convicted should be lifted, is the word she used, should. Advocates for reform say $1 million for someone who has spent decades in prison for something they didn't do just isn't enough. Would you sign a bill removing that cap? Well, I'll review anything that comes to my desk. And on this issue, this is something that I worked on as Attorney General. I strongly advocated for raising what was then the cap at $500,000, doubling that to a million. So, you know, that's where I've been on this. And now in my role is to, to review legislation that comes our way. But certainly we want to make sure that anyone who is wrongfully convicted and incarcerated receives just compensation. And I look forward to discussions with A.G. Campbell on this, as I think she's working on legislation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want to go big on wind energy. You are backing an offshore wind proposal that could eventually have a quarter of the state's electricity needs generated by wind. These wind farms often face economic and legal turbulence. How do you get this done? Well, you know, interesting, when I was in D.C. this week, we met with a contingent from uh, the Netherlands, a lot of Danish companies who are looking to invest. And I have said for a long time, Massachusetts, we should own this. I want us to be the global hub, or at least this country's hub, epicenter for offshore wind. There is such a huge opportunity for economic development and for growth and for jobs, also doing what we need to do to combat the climate crisis and meet our really strong goals here. So I am very bullish on wind. It's why I said to the team, let's go big. And you saw this week, we announced the Northeast's largest ever procurement for mm -hmm. offshore wind. Mm -hmm. It's going to mean great things for Massachusetts. I, I want to show you this next, next picture because, quite frankly, you're bucking State House tradition with this. Take a look at this. In your ceremonial office, instead of a portrait of a former governor, you have that, which is an empty frame. You, you took the suggestion of three students, if I get it right, and if I don't, correct me, please, who said that the empty frame would remind people of the underrepresented groups. The reaction has been mixed. So why would you go in that direction? I'm just, uh, just out of curiosity. Well, I guess it's not the first time I've bucked a tradition. <laughs> um, you know, I thought it was important. I've said the state house, this is the people's house. I wanted to find a way to invite our young people into a conversation, get them engaged in democracy. So we held a, a contest where they could choose who whose picture I should, should hang. And I got this wonderful essay from uh, three students from, they came together, which I always think is great, from great. Amherst, yep. Holyoke, and Springfield and submitted this essay proposing that I hold, hang an, an empty frame. What I liked is it represents two things. One, every day I walk in that office, I am supposed to think about and remember the people who are not walking the ha halls of power. Regular people, people who've been left out of the discussion, and every day have those people in mind when I act. I thought that was powerful. And number two, as I did the other day with little kids who came into my office, Look up at that frame and see yourself in that frame. Don't be wedded to what a governor looks like or used to look like. Think about yourself in that frame. And, and I thought those messages were really compelling. So, so when you walk into the office, do you do, the, do you do one and two when you walk into that office? I do. And I'm reminded of it anytime someone comes into that office. And I do have a lot of visitors. And it's a good conversation starter. It's an important conversation about representation, about democracy and a reminder about whose work you're there to do. I want to, I, I just want to talk about uh, Go Celtics because, you know, you've had some back and forth a little bit with the governor down there in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. What, my buddy, my buddy Shapiro, Josh Shapiro, great governor, great friend. We served together as attorney general. Uh, we used to bet from time to time, whether it's yeah. Eagle Patriots yeah. or, yeah, you know, right. Sixers Celtics. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I'm, I'm confident in our, in our team and, and looking forward to uh, success in this round. Right, right now the governor is probably what, the third best point guard in the state right now? I mean, you know, you've got Marcus Smart, Matt, and Malcolm Brogdon, and you, I think. that <laughs> <laughs> Hardly. Right. You don't want me with the ball. <laughs> Our thanks to the governor for joining us on the record Thank this morning. You.